My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Kahn on Twitter or at JeffreyCahn.com. This podcast is entitled The Year in Review from Digital Oil & Gas. As the thin Canadian winter sunlight lengthens the shadows of the north, it's a fine time to settle down with a Dalwini 15-year-old single malt, reflect on the year just past, and contemplate the year to come. For me and for Digital Oil & Gas, 2019 has been a major year of product development. First, the highlights. It began on January 9th when my book, Bits, Bites & Barrels, was soft released into the major online book platforms followed by its launch party at the Calgary Petroleum Club on January 30th. Since then, the book has sold, we think, around 4,000 copies. The book platforms make it devilishly hard to count actual units, and has handily paid back the hard dollar costs to bring it to market. It's easily double our original target. If the hard copy version was a success, then surely the audio version would also be a winner. We began work on it in April and published it in July, hoping to catch the summer listening market. Using the voice talents of Paul Boucher and the technical chops of Jason Lawrence, we cranked out 10 individual audio recordings, tightly edited to meet Audible's quite precise specifications. And by the end of December, 275 copies had been sold, which is, quite frankly, well below where it should be, considering how much windshield time there is in the U.S. oil and gas industry. So, we live in hope. The next big project was to design and deliver a one-day in-person training experience for Alberta Innovates. I've discovered that there's a fair amount of interest in digital awareness training because of the huge gap in understanding about digital in general and on the impacts of digital on oil and gas in particular. Many other companies have since purchased the training, as they've also recognized that unless and until their resources get across the basic digital concepts, they stand little chance to achieve the outcomes they want. The success of this corporate course prompted a public course offering, and working with Michelle Taylor, I attempted to stand up a comparable high-quality and replicable course. This didn't work at all. We tried several markets, including Calgary, Houston, and Sarnia, but there is zero interest. I think it's just a case of poor timing. The challenge of the in-person training experience is that it doesn't scale. I'm the bottleneck, as I'm at present the sole instructor, and I can deliver at best two or three courses per week with travel. In response, my final heavy lift of the year was to record the online version of the in-person training. The entire digital oil and gas team decamped on a retreat to develop seven and a half hours of recorded video lectures and companion visuals and quizzes that would become the new online offering now available on Udemy. And in between all of this development activity, I also attended or presented at 22 separate events and panel discussions, recorded two webinars, wrote and published 32 blog posts and published 34 podcasts, and interviewed eight technology entrepreneurs for the podcast series. So, looking forward to 2020, I expect to continue building on the commercial success of the book and its various spin-off products. We'll release captions for the entire online training course. A second version of the online course is in the works, improving the lecture quality, beefing up the quizzes, and incorporating more variety in the lecture formats. My co-author, Rachel Goyden, has already hinted that we might need to start work on Bits, Bites, and Barrels 2.0. There's now a gathering body of work in the industry to suggest that there are lessons to take on board, tactics that work and have generated real results, and all manner of trials that demonstrate clearly what does not work. I'm also keen to get the book into other languages, although that is dependent on the publishing industry. The languages that I think are most relevant are Spanish, Arabic, Russian, and Chinese, and I'm very open to any solicitations in that regard. The blog and podcast series will continue in their present form, and I expect a lot more interviews with digital and oil industry participants. I also expect the speaking engagements, book signings, and panel discussions to continue apace, with much more emphasis on the international market. Not to read too much into it, but I think the international market is keen to learn what the Western markets are doing. I'm already booked out for speaking in London, Madrid, Calgary, and Houston. So, some lessons from the year. Here are my five key takeaways from spending this past year focused on helping managers everywhere accelerate digital energy. Number one, digital is real. Enough companies have experimented with digital to satisfy themselves that it's real. CIOs need no convincing. 
From their perspective, digital tourism is now over, and companies now need to start investing to capture value. Waiting any longer will create quite serious competitive problems in a few years' time. Meanwhile, the size of the prize is now well established, very large, and a career maker for the ambitious. Number two, general managers have upside. Despite the track records of success being laid down by the early adopters, many general managers, that is, those not working in technology, still lack even a simple grasp of the digital basics. They're going to have to get a move on, or they will build up a technical debt that will have to be paid. And payment may even be with an inorganic career change, read, dismissal from post for being a digital laggard. Meanwhile, those who do work on digital are getting promoted, future-proofing their careers, and getting invited to bigger tables. Number three, education is finally catching up. The education sector is not on pace with the changes taking place in digital. The more I learn about education, the less surprising this is, but companies should expect the next generation of workers to be less au courant with digital in their field, including engineering, geology, and instrumentation. There will need to be an investment in your existing people, as there will not be enough digital talent to go around. Meanwhile, your people are desperate for training. They worry about their relevance in the future. Number four, talent wants in on digital. Many young people have confided with me that their profound discouragement with the managers in oil and gas. Very few managers, it seems, encourage any change, are willing to entertain conversation about how digital could make a difference, and are prepared to invest in their people in upskilling in digital areas. Unless managers change, I fear that talent is going to vote with their feet and move over to the digital industry or leave oil and gas altogether. Meanwhile, Those that do cut the green beans a little slack are amazed at what the juniors can deliver with little support. Finally, number five, the future may well be Asian. It's accurate that North American oil and gas companies have advantages relative to their international peers by virtue of being in proximity to the center of the digital universe, that is, Silicon Valley. However, digital technologies are very democratic, low cost, widely distributed, and easily deployed. The most innovative developments in oil and gas may well not be in North America. The market here is not growing. Climate regulations are going in reverse. And there are now some meaningful digital behemoths in Asia. Meanwhile, those with international exposure are very well placed to pick up the trends and innovations that could prove to be very disruptive. So in conclusion, thank you so much for reading my work and following me in my various activities. I respond personally to every comment and call, and I am grateful for any feedback, no matter the content, so that my work can improve. I wish you all the very best for 2020. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts, and please tell a friend about the show. If you have a minute, please leave a review and a rating on iTunes, as that helps others find the show along with other great content. You can follow Jeffrey on Twitter, at Jeffrey Can, or on LinkedIn. Also, look for Jeffrey's new book, entitled Bits, Bites, and Barrels, The Digital Transformation of Oil and Gas, on Amazon and other fine online bookshops. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.